G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in this week's vlog, we're going to have a bit of a look at a new compost cage that I've set up. Uh, it's actually a Rob's version of Diogo's version of the Johnson Sioux bioreactor. It's a composting method. Um, I would urge you to look at Diogo's clip. There will be a link in the description below, and also little buttons will pop up at the end, uh, looking at um, uh, the science behind and his reasoning behind why he's setting it up this way. I'm doing it a little bit different, but yeah, he um, explains it a lot more eloquently than I can. So please check out that video once you've done watching this one of course um, and I've also run through the first section of the clip uh, a little bit of an issue we're having with the aquaponics uh, with the fish in there in particular um, so yeah I'll give you a bit of an update on that halfway through the clip but yeah I'll stop nattering on and we'll um, get cracking and look at my initial idea behind how I was going to set up the cage thought I'd give you a bit of a look at what's going on with this cage I'm actually setting it up where the old fish tanks used to be I came out here the other day and dug out a whole heap of the asparagus fern that we have down here. It's a real pain in the butt, uh, it sends runners underneath the ground. And what I decided to do was uh, chop all the greenery off the, um, the crowns that are buried down in the ground. And I'm just letting them dry out here in this bucket. Oh, well, the top ones are drying out anyway, the bottom ones slowly are. And yeah, I made sure there were no um, seed pods on them or little um, berries on them. And they're going into the um, new bioreactor. But the go from now is we'll be going down below the mango and grabbing a lot of um, leaf litter and the decayed logs. And I'm bringing them up here and adding them as a base. Down there with some spent fish food. I'll tell you a bit about that in a tick. Um, down as the base on here. And that will hopefully help to bring in some... Um, uh, some fungus and other uh, natural native bacteria and then we're going to build up layers of the um, Chinese celtus over there that tree there and there's another one uh, peeking out over the top of the hoop house and there's another one further down the back there's one in the front yard and there's also some um, pigeon pea that I want to mulch up as well plus some compost I've been saving in buckets and all that sort of stuff that will be going in here and yeah, setting it up as a uh, bit of a um, Johnson Sioux style, but nowhere near Johnson Sioux uh, bioreactor. So I'm not going to worry about any air coming in underneath the base at all. Um, I figure there will be enough coming in from the outside and also through the um, centre of this air column here uh, to help keep everything nice and oxy oxygenated. Just quickly, the uh, fish food down in the bottom there is because my fish, for some reason, have decided they, go, they like to knock off the standpipe for the solids lifting outlet. So I have to keep, um, yeah, putting it back on. I'm not too sure what the go is, whether they're getting a bit boisterous or whether it's just getting a little bit um, uh, loose. It's been, what, it's been in a fish tank for, I don't know, probably coming up six, seven years now. So yeah, I'll, I'll look into that and if I have to, I'll just pop in a uh, 316 stainless steel screw in the top just to stop it from falling off. But I think it's just the fish um, getting, at, getting very active and boisterous when they feed. Now for a bit of an update on what's wrong with these little fellas. Obviously you can see they're not finishing all off their morning feed. And just to show you how much they're little, little they're getting, I gave them probably um, that much in there and they've probably taken about a dozen pellets if that now what i think is happening is the solids lifting outlet is being knocked off by the fish but it's not because they're ravenously feeding i think it's because they're being visited by predator birds in the morning uh, two mornings in a row now we have seen kookaburras it's a pair of them fly out from under the deck and land on the um, cross arm of the uh, clothesline over there uh, the second time it happened I, I, well, the first time I didn't think anything of it, thought they were just getting um, a little bit friendly, like the butcher birds and magpies have done. Um, but the second morning I heard a big splash before the second one didn't um, land on the clothesline, he just flew through. And I have a feeling um, he's just spooked the fish to the point where they've just, you know, run around, run around, swam around the bottom of the tank and knocked off the solar's lifting outlet. Um, so. Yeah, the fish aren't feeding too well in the morning, but the good news is in the afternoon they seem to be fine. So I'm thinking uh, maybe they're just not feeling comfortable in the morning with this amount of light coming through here. But yeah, I got to the bottom of it. Um, it's the pesky birds and not necessarily the fish themselves. Well, that's enough about that. I just quickly haven't shot the uh, pest control clip, but I can give you an update. The dipole is working. We've got some fresh new leaves here on the um, Chinese cabbage and they don't look to be affected by the caterpillars so I think I've run the wall, 
won the war at least at this point in time. We have had a little bit of rain this week so I do need to do a reapplication of the BT spray but yeah more on that in another clip. But now I'll give you a bit of a gander at how I put that jobby together. How's it going folks? A little bit of an update on what I've been up to this week. Obviously you've already seen that I'm having a bit of a crack at a Diego footer style bioreactor. So I needed some greenery and the four Chinese saltus that were growing along the fence line here. Uh, pretty much well all I've added except for some garden scraps we had building up around the place. Uh, now these are a weed tree here and these four in particular need to come out because we want to build a retaining wall to build the soil up level to around about yeah that corner there maybe a little bit higher all the way down the backyard um, just so we have more usable space because I don't know if you can tell from here but yeah there's a little bit of a drop off makes it hard to um, set up chook pens and things like that um, a little mates joined me hello butchie um, yeah so they've all been harvested and all those bits of greenery will run through the mulcher as you can guess and this is what we've ended up with a uh, pretty full cage just from those four trees. I do have a few others that I could have chopped down and added. But I'm thinking what I will do is I will um, mulch them down at a later date as this pile settles and add them in on top. I'll give you a bit of a gander at where we're at this morning. Um, there's our little aeration tube made from six millimeter uh, chicken wire. I've done a, a wrap around there so it's nice and firm. And as you can see, we'll stick the light on. I don't know if that's helping at all, but yeah, it's staying round all the way to the base. Um, it has settled already overnight. It's down probably about, I don't know, about 10 mil, four inches, 10 mil, 100 mil, four inches. And we're starting to see the temperature start to rise just with the water and the Chinese Celsius. We're sitting at around about over 100 degrees, almost 40 degrees um, Celsius. Uh, when I put this in, I think it was just under 30 degrees uh, on the first day. Actually took me two days to do this because we were interrupted by rain a few times, but you get that. Uh, this is based on a suggestion made by Diego Footer and I would really like you to go over and check out his channel and suss out um, his explanation on um, his development of this style, a bit of an advancement on the Johnson Sue method. Um, I can tell you that I've made it a little bit different again. Obviously I'm using plastic, he's trying to get away from plastic, but I'm using shea cloth that obviously we have used many, many times before, recycling it, using it over again. I've connected the shea cloth using wire because it's more permanent and I dare say this cage will never be taken down. I'll use it over and over again uh, with different materials like we've got other trees we can mulch up after those other ones go. Uh, the shade cloth is wired on all the way around down the bottom and when it does come time to harvest it I'll harvest it like the uh, many other composts I've made in these cages. You scratch around the top to get what you need out at the time and when you want the bulk of what's down the base you just basically push it over and you can just shovel up whatever's down below. Uh, now just a few little quick pointers I have made this a little bit different um, uh, internally as well down the bottom I put a whole heap of semi rotted timber um, some old shiitake logs that didn't take off right down here in the base with the idea being is they're going to create a small amount of airflow down through the base I uh, have a few air pockets in there and then on top of that I use some of the leaf mold that we have at the base of our mango down the back and the idea behind that is hopefully uh, we'll have some microorganisms and fungi in there um, that will help seed this pile here and from there i just laid in the mulched up chinese celtus at around about eight inch or 200 millimeter layers and then gave it a blast with the hose just to help give it um, a little bit more moisture around about halfway i tossed in a bucket full of kitchen scraps i've been saving up and also a load of garden waste that had just been stockpiled for the next compost cage build and then yeah just on top of that went more of the chinese celtus with a bit of a hose down in between layers so just a quick run through on um, how these jobbies are supposed to work. Basically they're an aerated compost where you don't need to turn them. Now the idea is that this central core here um, will provide air from the centre up to about a foot into the pile. And as you can see here um, we're also going to have air coming in a foot from this side and that will help keep a lot of oxygen in the system for the bacteria. It should stay fairly well aerated. I do know from our old systems that after this stuff starts to decompose it will start to settle down upon itself 
um, so you will lose some of those air gaps in there but as I found with other piles um, it's fine just to leave it go um, the compost worms will move in and um, they'll slowly break down and aerate the the whole compost by leaving their little tunnels and tracks all the way through it now as for water keeping the moisture content at 70 percent both Diego and David Johnson recommend having some sort of an irrigation system around the top of the pile um, just to, that you can put on daily to let it um, keep the pile nice and moist. I'm not going to worry about that whenever I fill up the trays down there uh, for the plants um, I'll just run the hose around the top here it's pretty much all every second day so I'll give it a fairly good drenching and it should have good enough um, drainage that it won't become too waterlogged and just in case the thermophilic bacteria don't have enough to feed on in the pile to start the cooking process I have round about 15 litres of raw water aka aged urine up my sleeve I will not up my sleeve in some bottles and I can add five litres on at a time and that'll provide a load of urea ammonia and other elements and the bacteria will feed on that and start the cooking process and once the pile um, cools down after they've done their job uh, the fungi will move in and they can start feeding on the woody remains of any material that's in the pile uh, it is also sitting on the soil uh, unlike the Johnson Sioux which is up on a pallet and that's another thing Diego pointed out you know if it's in contact with the soil we're going to end up with all those goodies in there and this um, spot here where I've got my old composting barrels uh, this was where we had the original compost cages and you folks who have been following us for a while will know that um, yeah they made up pretty much all the same uh, except I did add things in like horse manure and dead roadkill like possums and rats and cane toads whatever I could get in there haven't done that this time just straight tree mulch and a bit of garden scrap and after a couple of months it broke down to a really nice compost all the compost worms from the ground moved in there uh, took over the, the second stage of decomposition and that's what fingers crossed is going to happen with this lot here as well uh, now it's not a quick composting method it is going to take a while as uh, you folks uh, who have seen the other compost cages we've built know so yeah I thought that would interest a few of you folks and I've just noticed we have a black soldier fly buzzing we have a couple of black soldier flies buzzing around here already I haven't hit my mango bin down the back but they're buzzing around the compost cage so there you go I will be doing a full um, clip on this later on down the line uh, I want it to break down a little bit first and see how it works uh, before I post a clip to YouTube uh, I don't want to be caught out saying that this is an awesome way to do something if it doesn't work so I think I'll just wait a while um, I'm fairly sure it's going to work I've composted enough in cages similar to this to know that you know she's already cooking away nicely don't forget there is that video link and in fact I'll put the whole uh, playlist that Diego has on the Johnson Sioux down in the description below so please check that out and if you um, yeah enjoy Diego's teaching style don't forget to subscribe to his channel and show him some love my clip on um, how our little cage is going won't be published for a little while because I like I mentioned I do want to see how it um, breaks the material down before I actually um, post a clip on it there will be updates on how this one is going though in the meantime I'll post um, little updates in vlogs like this one and uh, the folks who are supporting us on the YouTube membership program and farm your own yard thank you very much folks um, they'll get updates along the way as well but I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. And I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks. Take it easy.